Jeremy Tracy of Tracy Boards coming back at you with the next installment in our series specifically about crokinole tournaments. I've already done one to cover the flow of the day and in the future, very near future, we are going to do one about scoring and how to fill out your scorecard. We're going to do one about jackpots, how to choose your division. But this video, you are going to pick up if you don't already know how it works, how do round robins work at a crokinole tournament? Again, not the be all and end all, it's just how we are going to do it, how we've seen work best in crokinole tournaments of this size. So we're gonna cover two specific situations because this coming Saturday, on January 28th, at our Elmira Classic, Winter Classic Crokinole Tournament, you're going to get to play a round robin in the morning and one in the afternoon. And in each case, one of two things is going to happen. Either you are going to end up in a pool that has an odd number of players, or you're going to end up in a pool that has an even number of players. How the rotation in a round robin works is similar in both of those situations, but there is a slight difference. The first thing I'm gonna show you, look at my handy dandy high tech state of the art diagram, and you will see 11 people in this pool. That's not necessarily how it's going to work out that you're going to have 11 people in your pool, but that's what we're using in this diagram just to explain it. Now you'll so notice a couple of things. You'll notice one, all 11 faces around that table are smiling because they're playing the greatest game on earth. So what's going to happen when the first round robin starts, you will be told which pool you're in, which row of boards you should sit in, at which point you're going to go grab yourself a seat. It really doesn't matter what seat you grab because with a full round robin, you will end up playing everyone in your pool one time. So you just grab a chair, meet your opponent. Hi, nice to meet you. Let's play Crokinole. And you are going to have a match against that opponent. Now, I'll get into the scoring and the rounds and all that later when we talk about scorecards in a separate video, but for now, you are going to have eight minutes to play your match against that opponent. At that point, we actually have a buzzer system set up, so there's a buzzer to start the game. That's how you know when to start. There's a buzzer, a different sound that tells you there is one minute left to finish your game, and then we have a buzzer that says, er, that's the end of the match. At which point you are going to move, we give you a minute to a minute and a half to move one seat to your left, so you are going to sit at a new board with a new opponent. So you're gonna play a game, move. Play a game, move. This would be a great time to slide in the answer to another question that we get a lot about crokinole tournaments. And the question is, how do we decide who shoots first? Now this isn't always the case, but in a tournament this size, what works really, really well is that the organizers, either myself or Andrew Hutchinson or somebody else is going to say, all right guys, for the first round of each game, it is always going to be the person sitting closest to that end of the gymnasium that shoots first. So if you look at this diagram, you are going to play five games where you are the player that shoots first in the first round, and you're going to play five games where you are the player who shoots second in that first round. Just keeps things nice and balanced and fair. So as you're moving around, you'll notice on the diagram there is a person a very happy person who is sitting out at the end. What's going with the with the odd number of people? It just has to be that way. When you get to that end of the rotation, you can grab that chair. You don't have to stay there. You've got eight minutes of free time. You can grab a bathroom break. You can grab a coffee. You can grab a picture and post it to social media and tell everyone you know that you are busy playing the greatest game on earth. When that game ends, you're going to move onto the other side of the table and continue your rotation until you've played all the other players in your pool. Pretty simple. Now, if you end up in a pool with an even number, you see this handy dandy state of, the, state of the art diagram shows 10 players, it's an even 10, so we don't have a buy at the end. We don't have a break where someone sits out. The rotation works the same with one exception. You'll also see a smiling face there with the word anchor underneath them. So if you are in a pool with an even number of people, there's a chance one of the organizers is going to come along and say, hey, would you like to be the anchor in this pool? It is very, very important that we have an anchor. I don't wanna to go too deep down this rabbit hole, but without an anchor, if everyone just rotates, at around the fifth or the sixth game, everyone would be sitting across from someone they already played and completing the round robin gets very messy. The anchor saves all that. So if you're asked to be the anchor, just know you're doing an awesome task to help this tournament be awesome. So 
the anchor is always going to stay at the same board and everyone else rotates around them. Now what I didn't take the time in my high tech diagram to show you is that the anchor does stay on one table but they don't always stay in the same chair. They will play one game on this side and then when their next opponent comes along they're actually going to jump to that side of the board so they're shooting on the opposite side and then after that game they move back here. So they always stay at the same board but they flip sides back and forth. That is the way to keep things the most fair and even right across the board. There's that pun again. So that's how that goes. Those are your two different variations of how the flow of a round robin could go, will go, in, uh, in this upcoming tournament and likely other tournaments of this size. I hope this has been helpful. Like I say, it's really good for people that are new to Crokinole to know about this. The more people in the room that understand the flow, just the easier it's going to go. This hopefully could also be beneficial if you're considering running a, a tournament for yourself, uh, keeping this anchor in mind for even numbered pools will be super helpful for everyone's enjoyment. Stay tuned, be coming back at you real soon with jackpots, scorecards, and a bunch of other fantastic information to help you enjoy your tournament playing the greatest game on earth. Make it a great day.